Welcome to day three of the winds. Uh, we'll pick it up from where we left off in our last video. One thing I would like to point out is for this uh, map session, I'm using the US Forest Service layer uh, from Gaia. Uh, if you're in an area that uh, is Forest Service lands and you have access to their maps, I have found them to be very useful. They seem to be really accurate. Uh, they seem to be updated more regularly than uh, USGS topo maps and some other sources, and uh, I really enjoy having access to them uh, in areas like this where, where I can use them. So just a little tip. Uh, the other thing is uh, as far as, you know, going over the maps like this at the beginning of the videos, uh, let me know if you, if you like that, if you find it useful. Uh, or if you want to see anything else, just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to uh, make it worth your time. So let's go ahead and pick up down here. We spent the night on Kenny Lake and you'll notice the Forest Service map does have that labeled, whereas uh, the other maps that we've been using had not. Um, we started by uh, dropping down into an area down here. Uh, it's called New Fork, uh, New Fork. River, New Fork Lake, or New Fork Creek, whatever. Um, on the way down, we met a couple of uh, gentlemen who I will probably never forget. Uh, you know, knowing knowing the physical and mental challenges of backpacking in fairly remote areas with difficult terrain, I, these guys, uh, the, there were two of them. Uh, I think they were together. They were kind of spread out on the trail a little bit, but the one gentleman was probably well into his 70s, and the other one, I think, was probably approaching 90 and these guys were going up i think it was you know somewhere in here uh, a pretty <laughs> darn difficult we were coming down they're going up a pretty darn difficult section of trail and you could tell that these guys had just been doing this forever and knew their business and nothing was going to stop them and nothing was going to phase them and you know i just can't imagine the mental fortitude it would take at such advan an advanced age to do this you know couple that with the fact that uh today you know we knew weather was coming in <laughs> so we were doing our best to get out of the high elevations and these guys were going up and we just talked to them very briefly but you know, i'm not going to forget these two guys it was it was amazing so at any rate you know we spent quite a bit of time uh dropping down from the Lozier Lakes area. Uh, this New Fork Park area from above, looking at a distance, it looked awesome. If we had been able to spend uh, another night and another day, I would certainly would consider altering my route to be able to maybe drop down in here, spend the night, and then kind of backtrack and go back up this way. But we didn't have that luxury. We wanted to beat the rain. Uh, so we got down uh, into not quite the bottom of the valley. We finally picked up Porcupine Trail and started working our way back up to the north. Um, the area approaching Porcupine Pass up in here was just an incredibly beautiful I mean, Yellowstone-like meadow. Um, the wind was at our back, so I didn't really expect to see much in the way of wildlife, but it's one of those park areas that you just expect to see, you know, an elk or a bear or something uh, in there. Just, just gorgeous. So we worked our way up there, um, made the climb up to Porcupine Pass, and uh, we didn't really spend too much time on top. But then coming down this area, uh, lots of very steep long switchbacks it's quite a drop and uh, you can see by the contour lines how close they are that it's it's pretty steep for whatever reason i didn't take a lot of video i didn't take any video as we came down the pass itself but um, at the end of day four i'll have the slideshow at the end and definitely have some good pictures in there so please uh, come back and see that You'll, uh, you'll see what that pass looked like. There were a lot of what I believe were uh, sheep tracks on the, on the trail in this area. Didn't see any sheep, uh, but having talked to some of the guys at one of the outfitter shops in Pinedale, uh, yeah, they said, you know, sheep kind of start up in this area and you'll see them occasionally. So we came through here, dropped down Porcupine Pass, uh, 
finally got down out of the steep stuff, started getting back into the trees. And down here, uh, right where we cross, for the first time, cross Porcupine Creek, that's where we uh, jumped a cow moose. I think she was bedded down. She was probably, she was in the trees probably about 10 yards to my left as we crossed here and she took off, kind of cut across the trail in front of us. I didn't have the uh, video recording at the time, unfortunately, but Trisha managed to get a couple pictures. So I've included <laughs> the best picture we could get of the moose kind of looking back at us from the brush. So uh, this whole squiggly area was me kind of wandering around. We, we found a place that looked like a good campsite, but we chose not to stay there because really the only good place to put a tent uh, there was just a humongous dead tree right above it and didn't want that coming down on our heads if the weather started blowing and got nasty. So we decided to push on downstream along Porcupine Creek. And I got to say that area of Porcupine Creek, actually the whole area all the way down to the trailhead is just my ideal of a beautiful, rugged mountain, a Rocky Mountain stream it's just amazing and you'll see a couple of shots of that along the way in the next couple of videos so we finally uh got down here uh did find a really nice really nice campsite uh sheltered uh we got set up i think we got there probably about three o'clock in the afternoon uh the clouds were definitely there the sky was sky was gray uh we got camp set up and uh, just in time because about an hour later uh, the rain started not heavy just got some sprinkles off and on so we climbed into the tent took a nap and then the rain gods were kind enough to hold off for us in the evening when we were able to get our dinner together and get comfortable get set and uh, it rained off and on during the night so uh, we had a really good night Really nice chance to rest a little bit and just enjoy the area. Uh, so you can see our travels for the day, seven and a half miles, um, lots of up and down, um, and uh, very steep in here, as I mentioned. Uh, our maximum elevation, that was uh, probably hit, let's see, I guess that would have been hit right there at Porcupine Pass. So just a little bit higher than where we were at Lozier Lakes. Steep ascent and even steeper coming down. Um, had a good day. So let's go ahead and start the video. All right, so goodbye Kelly Lake and goodbye high country. As we start our way down, although we won't be out of the high country until we get over porcupine pass but here we go <sighs> fish are rising in the pond Mr. J saying goodbye.
Doing okay, Pooh? Down we go. I don't know if you can catch him, but there's a little pika looking at me about five, six yards ahead on the trail. There he goes. You might see him scooting. See him? Right under that rock. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Hi, pika, pika. Go lay in your winter supply of food, buddy. It's coming. So we're headed down there and then I believe we'll be going up to the right uh, towards the bottom where it splits and that's where we'll have to go over Porcupine Pass. Come on up on. Take your picture too. Okay. Now we're climbing our way up to Porcupine Pass. Coming into a beautiful meadow, and up there somewhere is Porcupine Pass. But this is really pretty. Beautiful. You gotta work for it, but it is pretty. Oh. <clears throat> Just kick my toe. 
plateau. No fun. So we're out of the trees and Porcupine Pass is in sight. So you can listen to me huff and puff. And after this, the rest of our trip is down. back the way we came. Alright, we'll try to check in at the top. Porcupine Pass. Porcupine will chew you up and poop you out. Nice meadow down there. There we are. That's where we're going. Good job. You made it. Hey, good job. Okay, we're looking back the way we came, so a bit breezy. We still have good weather, so we can be grateful for that. And uh, man, that meadow down there, that's where we're going. It's a ways out, but make it to something like that, there's going to be places to camp. So we'll have the hard part behind us and easy out tomorrow. I'm assuming you don't want to linger up here. All right, we're going to head down. <clears throat> Well, down off the pass and heading down Porcupine Creek, down Porcupine Trail. We are looking for a camp spot. We just had one that was would have been a great spot, except the place to put a tent, really the only place to put a tent. I had a giant dead tree right next to it, and we don't want that coming down on our heads. So the search continues. There should be some more. 
We're just ready to find something and call it a day. <clears throat> Yesterday was a long, hard day. Looks like we get to cross Porcupine Creek here. Easy peasy, babe. Okay, so night three, uh, along Porcupine Creek, we did find a place to stay, in a nice place, quite comfortable. Uh, we got here at about, what, three, and got the tent and everything set up, and about four, the rain rolled in, so we snugged up in our tent, and uh, <clears throat> waited the rain out, took a nap, and we got to a break for dinner, so we're done with dinner, and 